Today we play with Smart Summon. Hey guys, all right, so today I've been, uh, well, for the last few days I've been messing around with Smart Summon. And for those of you that are, uh, are unfamiliar with uh, the version 10 software, there are plenty of other videos related to that. I haven't yet done a video on version 10 just yet. Uh, basically, I got my version 10 a couple days after some of the other uh, early software update uh, receivers got theirs. Long story as to why. But also, uh, I've been busy working with the uh, adjustable screen mounts and different things, and I wanted to make sure I fully understood a lot of different aspects of it before I went too crazy with it. But Smart Summon is definitely uh, probably the, the coolest feature that I've seen Tesla come out with uh, as since I've owned my car, with the exception of maybe Autopilot. But uh, there's some definite uh, strengths to it, and there's some weaknesses as well. So uh, today I wanted to show you some of the things that I figured out. I, I picked a, uh, a, an empty church parking lot, this particular church building. They're, uh, they're closed on Mondays, and so um, I knew it would be empty. Also, the cool thing about this parking lot is there's two separate, there's an overflow parking lot that's connected by a couple small driveways with a grassy area between the two. And you'll notice that I do some testing where I stand on one side of the grass with the car on the other side to see if the car will go around it. And um, so, yeah, let's uh, let's go ahead and dive in. I put the camera uh, coming from the ceiling so you could see uh, a map. I zoomed in so you could see where the car was going. And uh, you know, hopefully this will be entertaining for you.
So you'll notice my first try uh, was me standing on the other side of the grass. Now this wasn't the first time I tried the uh, enhanced summon. I tried it several times previous to this, but it's the first time that I, um, it's the first time I, I wanted to film it and show you guys some of the weaknesses. So before I get into the strengths, I wanted to show you some of the weaknesses. And that is that it, the, uh, the smart summon will plot when you first open it up on the screen on the phone it will it will plot a course and you can see that course as a, a blue line on the screen on your phone well when you're just on the other side of a grassy area a, a wide grassy area like that it gets confused it, it won't plot a line around that grass it wants to go through it so the car tries numerous times now on the upside the car does not want to drive through grass it will stop every time. I tried this many many times beyond even what you saw on camera, and it just doesn't want to drive through grass. Really, really cool. Now I did get uh, I did get some footage of it going around that area the other day, but both myself and the car weren't in the middle of that grassy area. We were way over on the side, and it figured out it needed to go around. Uh, so I I let it sit there and try and try and try, and it, it just wouldn't go around. So I began uh, testing it just in the open parking area, and it's interesting. A couple of things that I found. One, the car does move ahead confidently at certain times and very tentatively at others. And um, I find that very interesting. It, it's um, Oh, also, it doesn't necessarily read painted lines. So I wanted to use this when there were no cars there. I didn't want any potential mishaps. Uh, but if there were cars there, I know it would go, or, or well, I'm assuming it would go around them. Uh, but I didn't want to, I wanted to do my testing with the parking lot empty. And then eventually what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and bring a couple of our other cars there, park them in strategic locations, and force the smart summon to navigate around them. And I think that that will be a, a better representation of real life, but at least in the empty parking lot, I wanted to give this a try. Now, one thing I was unaware of uh, when I first got the smart summon was that your location isn't necessarily where the car is going to go. On the screen, there's a section where it shows it will pin a given location. So you get out of the car, you're in a given location with your phone, the GPS will pin that location. Well, then if you move, the car still heads to that pinned location. There's at least one video online of a guy being chased by his car in advanced summon. Well, that's that's not the case. You can't move around and the car will follow you. It will go to that pinned location. In fact, the first two times I tried, uh, I tried to use the advanced summon, the car didn't stop at me. It, it kind of went near me and kept on driving away. Well, I realized what had happened was I had moved the map. So my location on the map versus its pinned GPS location were now different. And the car was driving to the pinned GPS location. Uh, now, that's weird, but it's cool at the same time. That means that I could send the car. I could summon it somewhere other than where I'm standing. You can you can activate the smart summon and get out of the car oh, i have traffic build up i think i'm gonna go around this i think there's an accident up ahead you can uh you can move the map around and change the, the pinned location to somewhere else so i could theoretically send the car somewhere other than where i'm at now, uh, that would be a little bit strange. I'm not sure how, uh, how well that would work as far as sending the car to, to pick somebody up on the other side of a building. Uh, I do know that uh, it, you, you can only send the car within a given radius. And in fact, it will tell you to move the pinned location within the blue circle. So there's a, a given radius that the, uh, the smart summon will operate within. So you can't send the car a mile away, but you could send it to the other side of a building, assuming the building isn't absurdly huge. So it's kind of uh, kind of fascinating. And my overall opinion of Smart Summon at this point 
is, I'll give you its strengths and weaknesses. The strength is, it, it's not as slow as I thought it might be. Initially, I thought this thing's going to be so slow that it's going to be completely useless other than just a party trick. Uh, and uh, it, so it's, it's not as slow as I thought. Number two, it does seem to be quite good at navigating obstacles, uh, just in the testing I've done so far. Number three, at least for me, my phone connected, the summon connected pretty quickly and easily. There really wasn't much of a problem. And uh, I ultimately, it's it's still it still is more of a party trick than anything else. But I can see the usefulness of it. And once I test it around uh, parked vehicles and that kind of thing, uh, and other obstacles, and I get used to the fact that I can trust it, well, maybe then I will actually use it, especially if we're at a store or at church on Sunday or, you know, doing whatever it is we're going to do it, where we're parked a distance away from the door and it's raining, say, well, I wouldn't mind summoning the car to me. There have been plenty of times that I've had to make a mad dash to the car and get soaked in order to get in the car and drive to the door of a building to let my wife and kids in the car. Uh, and I, so I could see someone being actually useful in that instance. Now for me, I could see myself, I don't want to say needing Smart Summon, but I could see myself making legitimate use of Smart Summon to where I'm really glad that I have it probably eight or ten times a year. Maybe more than that. I don't know. Maybe maybe 20 times. But still, a handful of times, a couple handfuls of times a year, I could see myself using it and actually going, oh, wait, 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 I can use the Smart Summon. This is great. I, I can see that being the case. So uh, now the downsides to it. Number one, it doesn't really stop right at the pinned location. It gets kind of roughly there, but GPS uh, GPS accuracy is plus or minus three or six feet or something like that. So I've had it drive right up to me and stop, and I've had it stop. <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't know. It, the last time I did it just today, it was probably eight feet away from me and it stopped and said summon complete. <laughs> like, oh, well, it's kind of far away. Uh, and the problem with that is, let's say you're in a, a crowded parking lot, which I find to be the dumbest thing in the world for people you know, doing this with the smart summon. I just got to say that. But let's say you're, let's say it's, it kind of proves itself to where it is usable. It's not going to hit anybody in a crowded parking lot. Well, the crowded parking lot there's, it's not just a problem being that there's safety issues with people or cars there. Another problem is, though, I, as I said, it's not as slow as I thought it would be. It's not as fast as it needs to be or as confident in its movements as it needs to be to be useful if there's other people in a parking lot, nor is it accurate enough. So let's say you're at a Walmart or a Jewel Osco parking lot or someplace where where there's a lot of cars moving around and pedestrians and you want the car to come pick you up whether you've got it's it's raining or you've got a large basket of, of groceries or or you have mobility issues I could see this being very useful for somebody that that uh, has mobility issues uh, physical uh, impairments or whatever you want the car to come get you well it's going to tentatively back out of its parking space and kind of jerk the wheel around and it's going to kind of move and stop and lurch a little bit it's going to stop for the slightest little thing and it's going to move slowly and then it's not going to stop right near you it it doesn't know if it's blocking a, a through area in a parking lot or not now you got to stop block other cars they're going to be beeping at it. it they don't know that the car is empty especially in my case with tinted windows and if they did see the car was empty, they'd probably really freak out. You know, did somebody fall over in the car? You can't see them. So it's not, it's going to stop far away from you. It's not necessarily going to find a parking space and pull into it. It's just going to kind of drive up near you and, again, block people and just cause, I guess, overall cause some chaos. And uh, so that's the biggest negative to it. Uh, I would say actually the biggest negative is related to that and that is the biggest negative to this is I think it was released too early. Now I love Tesla. I have a Tesla related YouTube channel. I love it. Tesla is a great company. However, I do believe they've released this too early and I, and I, I recognize that 
they allow their their end users to be beta testers for them but honestly uh, it's advanced summon is too sketchy there's too many uh, edge scenarios that it can't cope with and there are too many what ifs it needs to read painted lines it needs to uh, like in my case it was driving right through uh, parking lines because there were no cars there but we know that the car is capable of seeing painted lines I mean for crying out loud there it's reading painted lines so why smart summon doesn't see the painted lines in a parking lot I have no clue because it you know they Tesla has the capabilities to program in reading of painted lines uh, I can say that it is though it was it was released too early and it's too sketchy I'll say that it is it's it's a step forward in autonomous vehicle navigation and for that I applaud Tesla wholeheartedly and I want to do a sort of a mini series on uh, the smart summon and will it work in you know, this scenario or that scenario will it avoid pedestrians will it avoid a bicycle sitting there on a, on a kickstand what I I want to find out more about it and how consistent it is I, I know at this point I'm beginning to recognize some of the the weaknesses of the system but are those weaknesses consistent if they are then you can know how to use the car uh, and avoid those weaknesses so to speak it's like anything else uh, you know if you have a, a sensitive tooth you know don't chew anything hard on that side you know if you have a cold sensitive tooth you know don't drink anything cold on that side you can work around it if you have a physical impairment you've got a bad ankle or a bad back it's not that you can't live you just work around it and I have a feeling that smart summon is that way that there will be many ways to use it that you can sort of work around the, the weaknesses of it so that's my opinion of it but take this as you will I uh, you know go back and enjoy it driving around the, the parking lot if you'd like if you have any questions let me know one thing that I have to say is with this weird steering wheel in my car I, I've watched other videos where the the cameras in the car and you see the see the wheel moving there's something about seeing an interrupted steering wheel that's not circular moving around and it, it really does seem to sort of uh, enhance the effect or exaggerate the effect of the car driving itself when I was watching from a distance and I could see the wheel moving inside the car it's it's a little eerie so uh, so I was glad to be able to do this video just because of that again the steering wheel just it, it uh, exaggerates the the look of the fact that the wheels moving with nobody in the car so anyway thanks for watching guys if you have any questions let me know and uh, you have yourselves a wonderful day Bye-bye now.